Hello there folks, how you guys doing? Doc Martin Easy here. Uh, just got transferred over to the white base and go figure the day that I get over here. Freaking Xeon blew a bunch of freaking holes into the side of it and now I'm stuck out here. <sighs> Middle of Central Asia. Oh well, at least this will give me an opportunity to not only do some more movie reviews, but also, you know, enjoy some sun, get some rays. You know, all that good stuff. So, before I begin, I do want to apologize for the, the lightness of this review. There were a couple of things I had to handle real quick. But other than that, everything should be good. So, the topic that we'll be talking about today is going to be Tomb Raider. And again, this is going to be a... Excuse me. It's going to be a brief overview. Only because this series spans at least three movies, including the new one that came out recently. And, uh... For me to sit there and talk about every single movie and its merits, I, it's pretty hard, especially when it comes to this particular video game movie franchise, just because it's a whole lot of flashiness and not a whole lot of substance. Uh, with that being said, let me go over some of the brief introductory information about Tomb Raider. Hey, how you doing? What are you doing right now? Oh, nothing, you know, just chilling, waiting for them to fix the ship, all that good stuff. How about yourself? Ship took a couple hits. Why are you out there helping? Hey, man, I just transferred aboard the ship. I don't, I don't know what makes it tick. Can I, can I continue with my review? Definitely any social type. Anyways, where was I at? Yeah, freaking anti social types. Alright, so the Tomb Raider series spans three movies. Two that were made in the early 2000s and one that just came out recently. Uh, the two first movies were starring. Was it Angelina Jolie as the uh, titular Tomb Raider? And uh, the last one has Alicia Vikander as Laura Croft. You know, Ex Machina fame, I believe, was the one really big film she was a part of. And I think also, what, The Danish Woman, something like that? I don't quite remember the name of that title. But anyways, uh, Tomb Raider, in broad strokes, is probably one of the more successful video game movie franchises out there. And it's not, again, it's not because of its substance. These films, the first two films are very much action-y popcorn flicks that... If you were to ask me what the plot was for those movies, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't. It took me re-watching them to realize that one of those movies, she was hunting down Pandora's box. For some reason, I don't remember that detail from before. And when you... I'm gonna have the trailers for all three movies up here, just so you don't understand. Like, the trailers pretty much give away the entire movie. You, you don't have to watch the films. That's kind of sad. That's, that's how lacking in plot they are. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I really couldn't tell. Like, before doing this review, I couldn't tell you what Angelina Jolie's Laura Croft was rating tombs for. Now I can tell you what one movie she was rating for. Another one. That, I guess she was fighting against the Illuminati. Oh, it doesn't quite hold a candle to Indiana Jones and him fighting the Nazis, but you know, that's just me. I'm old school like that. Now, I will go over very brief spoiler territory when it comes to the last movie. Only because... I mean, okay. It's spoiler territory, but it's in the trailer. That's the sad part. Like, the trailer spoils the movie for you. So, spoiler alert up ahead. Alright, if you're with me still, I guess you... Kind of already saw the trailer, or you just don't care about it. I get it. Okay. If I was to summarize the last Tomb Raider in broad strokes, pretty much take the beginning origin story for Batman and Batman Begins, and the clown from Iron Fist. I can't remember his freaking name because Iron Fist just it's one of those. It's one of the few Netflix Marvel shows that kind of made me a little bit angry. Just a little bit, not too much. 
<laughs> because it borrowed his origin story from Batman. I'm just saying. So yeah, Tomb Raider borrows that origin story of a rich kid trying to, you know, live up to their father's ideals. And in this case, they take a page from. Spoiler it again for not this movie, but another movie that's been out there for quite some time. In an Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where <clears throat> Indy slash Laura Croft go on a hunt for their father, who happens to be looking for some archaeological object that it doesn't even matter. It could be the freaking Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, or wherever the hell it is that they were looking for in the, the Devil's Sea in near Japan. I know the location from that movie, but I don't know what, I don't remember what the hell they were hunting for. <laughs> the one thing I can just think of was like how much I missed Indiana Jones fighting Nazis, the Illuminati, and what's the organization? I don't even remember the organization that Laura Croft was going up against. Sorry, it's really hot in here. I don't even remember what organization she was going up against. I just thought they were like poor facilities. Like, there's a reason why Nazis are great villains in any medium they use them in. Books, movies, television, video games especially. They've, they've dehumanized themselves of all the atrocities. Like, you don't feel bad when you see a Nazi get killed in any sort of media. You don't feel bad at all. You know, for these people, except for the main guy, all of them are probably just mercenaries... Some of them might have been mercenaries. They might have been just, you know, just for hire and they just want to get paid. I can I can I can relate to that, right? A Nazi I can't relate to. That's why they make great villains. But that's beside the point. Uh, are the movies worth a watch? They are. They're definitely worth a watch. Would I like, keep in my library? I mean, no. No, I, I I wouldn't have a physical copy of it. You know, physical copies are like meant for something special. Maybe a, a downloaded copy. Yeah, I'd probably do that. But even then. And, and I realized, like, as I was watching the older Tomb Raiders, I realized there was a reason, like, the main reason why I wouldn't even watch these is because, let's be real, Angelina Jolie back in the early 2000s was smoking hot. And she also had that slightly crazed look in her eyes. Like, if I was to go on a date with her and take her to a nice seafood dinner and then have some snoo snoo afterwards, she'd probably break my freaking pelvis. Like, she's got that crazed look in her eye that you probably won't survive the night. It also doesn't help that she was carrying around during that time period a vial of her lover's blood at that time. What was his name? Billy Bob Thornton? Like, she was crazy in real life, too. I think she still is just a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Laura Croft, if Angelina Jolie's Laura Croft came up to me and say, hey, me and you are going on a date, I'd be like, all right, let me let me get my last one testament together because uh, I'm probably not going to survive the night. However, if I do, it'll be a great story to tell. <laughs> well, that's the pig in me, I'm sorry. But you get the idea. Like, I probably wouldn't live through it. And with that... Uh, the next series I'll be reviewing is going to be Resident Evil. Again, it's going to be a broad strokes going over all the movies. Uh, I want to get into more detail about it right now. However, uh, that guy's right. I should probably go ahead and, you know, help him, help him out. So with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.